kind of see it right there we go so yeah that's the first time I've, we've ever seen it do that are you getting water up down in there then yeah all right guys so we're back at this one with the defrost clock so what's going on now no longer is it freezing up this video is brought to you in part by true tech tools quality tools essential support All right, guys, so we've got a lot of issues going on in this restaurant. I think we got some water leaking and all kinds of craziness. Let's go and see what we got going on. It's pretty new to me. Well, the, they made the drain go up and back down again, and, and I don't see any water in your pan down there. It should drain down. Chances are they've probably dropped something. All right, so we've got us a drain hose there it kind of comes down it loops back there there i'm going to blow through the hose first and then blow through that drain i got some gunk out see that there we go and that should yep drain right down in there now once that's done doing that we'll go ahead and blow it out one more time uh, what we use there is just a gallo gun there. Looks like it's about done draining. That are plugged up again. Pour it up one more time. The air filter is pretty clean. I usually just use a wire tie and that'll hold it. What's going on? We're getting a lot of water. You can kind of see it right there. We go. So, yeah, that should help out quite a bit. These have a tendency to get crap sometimes in there, but honestly, I don't see how it happened. That one's pretty well secured, so it may just be an accumulation or some sort. Either way, we're good to go. They can just wipe that out and then it'll be fine. Set 34. Let's go 35. All right, so we got this all cleaned up. We got the water there cleaned up. This went back to reading. Let's hit the set. Set is 35 now. That'll swing up to 39 and back down again. Hopefully it'll be fine. We just went one degree. Maybe that'll give it a little bit. Yeah, there, just kick back on. That may give it a little extra headway there. We'll see, may not make a difference. The biggest thing was the drain was plugged, which I'm sure will happen again. Coming out of here, I believe. Are you getting water up down in there then? Yeah. So we're going to have to put it into a defrost then to get it to liquefy. Then we can see if we can get it to uh, drain out. Chances are it's probably froze. What else you got? What, was it leaking out of the bottom of the pan here? I haven't even looked yet, actually. It looks like ice buildup. Okay, so it goes from that cooler right into a freezer. That's not a good idea. So what are we doing to make sure that don't freeze? What in the world? It's been installed for quite a while. So no, it's not from just yesterday. The line froze outside. How did it freeze outside? I'll show you. Here all the way this, this, and it was even frozen up into here. And it can because of the humidity being as high as it is, this gets right, below 32. A, that's the first time I, we've ever seen it do that. So that's the cooler then. Okay, yeah, the cooler shouldn't freeze up like that. Right, that's what we thought. The other one wasn't doing it though? No. We are currently, it says 12, which we're really at about three something. Side glass is full. We're running a 15 degree evaporator, 16 degree evaporator. Let's put it into a pump down. Let's see if that solenoid maybe is not stopping. We waited for a little bit and it has changed position. We're still running right around uh, 18 degree evaporator. Don't feel like we're flooding back or anything. Let's go ahead and put it into a defrost. Yeah, that's pretty, ooh. That's not very pleasant to turn. I wonder if by chance that's sticking. Well, obviously not because it rotated on its own. Now, we just told it to go into a defrost. It's not pumping down yet. It's taking a sweet time. Let's see if it's still got power to that coil. Easy, cheap trick. Done this multiple times. Can't believe I didn't think of it sooner. As you can see right there, zero amps come over to this one. Say 18. It, it really obviously in amperage. All it's doing is picking up the magnetic field. 
we're still not pumping down very quickly. It's finally dropping. Don't know if we just need new insulation, if it's a malfunction, was the TXV flooding back? I mean, I'm not real sure. There's pretty going, going down pretty fast. Come on, clickety click. Wow, right off at one pound. And it's holding there. So that's the other thing. We wanna make sure that it's actually holding. I'm not sure. Now she said she had ice out here and she's saying that it's never seen that before. Now this insulation out here is garbage because the sun's ate it up. Still holding there. This is a timed off defrost, so let's go ahead and kick it back out. Man, these gears are sh crap. It ain't wanting to rotate. I don't know. I mean, I think it's jammed up. Okay, let's say it didn't go into defrost and it just started to freeze up. I could see that. Coil would start to freeze, then it just dropped and dropped in temperature because you had no airflow across it. I could see that as being a possibility. As you can see right now, I'm literally, I'm about ready to strip the gears out to do it. We're gonna replace this clock. I'm gonna guesstimate that's probably what's going on. For right now, I think that's gonna be the smartest bet for that. So right now, I mean, the side glass is full. Clock was tracking, but if it's not rotating by hand freely, that's obviously not right. So, and right now it's not acting up. So it could have very easily not gone into a defrost and they are not able to see behind the evaporator to know whether or not they've seen frost behind it. So we're just gonna change the clock. I have the same clock that they've got up here. They're neat because you can do different defrosts at different times, but honestly, that's usually not needed. These things here are tried and true and I have almost no problems and these things last 10 plus years. These things here, eh, not so much. But we're gonna switch them over and it's a little cheaper. So let's go ahead and kill power. We've already pumped it down. Let's verify that we ain't gonna get shocked. Zero volts, nothing, nothing, and go to ground. Ooh, 15 volts. Yeah, the problem is we've got probably 480 in the building, and so we're probably getting some stray. Yeah, I'm not getting shocked, it's stray voltage. Uh, it's an in induction into it. That's where you need your low, low impedance meter. I picked this meter up kind of cheap. We're gonna go ground to a terminal there. 17 volts. We're gonna go to low impedance or low Z. Now I go to it, nothing. Watch this, I'm gonna leave it right like that. 17 volts. You can also use that to trigger uh, GFIs. So whenever I'm in a 480 volt area, it, the induction of the high voltage wires running in the same conduit as other wires can induce a voltage into it, just like a transformer. We're gonna go ahead and just change that clock like I was planning on to, but that's a good example of low, uh, the low Z feature. So I'm gonna put that in there like that. This is out here in a parking lot area, so a lot of traffic comes in from semis and drive through people. into a, I was gonna go into its first defrost here in just a little bit. And we're about ready for four o'clock anyway. And trigger. All right, let's go see what the cooler temperature is right now because we're gonna put it into a defrost. We're at 38. Let's check the backside of this coil too. Oh, look at here, they're keeping it clean except for when you get that on there, that's gonna have a, a an effect on how well airflow goes through. And we're getting a little bit dirty. Definitely getting a little bit dirty there. It could use a good cleaning. It shut off at zero to three pounds. Okay, it is off, it's in defrost. More I'm thinking about it. We're just gonna go ahead and stick with the 45 minutes area that they're used to. That way it doesn't cause any nuisance to where they might have, I think there's a, something wrong. Also with the three defrost and the fact that the coil's actually uh, not frozen, kind of makes me not want to go any longer and just stir up potential calls for no good reason. Looks like we're set about 35 there on the temperature. That coil, the more I look at it, it looks like they've got, something's eating into the aluminum coil. It's actually eating it. 
I never noticed that from hamburger and sausage type meat, but maybe sausage has got some weird fat to it that's causing a problem. I didn't move that out from underneath there. It is covered up, but I didn't want to brush that off with that meat underneath there. Still a little surprised by this drain line that comes across and goes into that freezer. It's got to have heat tape on the other side, but usually you bring the freezer into the cooler and drain it out. Or most of the time we'll go right out the side wall, but I think this is a brick building. Wait a minute here. So the insulation goes straight up. Yeah, so it goes right out. The, so the line set wouldn't be causing drippage all the way over here. I'm confused. I am not real sure. I mean, our coils are clean. I don't know. The clock's definitely wrong, so let's try that first. Let's go look at this cooler. You gotta love when you got 50 things wrong. And they say they're keeping these coils clean, which is good. And this is one of the weird ones where they put a solenoid on it. You've got the drain coming down right back here. And you got, a, you got a drip. So when you have no water down here in the drain pan, you're obviously not going to defrost very often. And as warm as it is, it should have been able to do it. Okay, these doors are all whopper jawed. That's not gonna help it not freeze up. Need new door seals. That's garbage. That will get you cited by the health department. Need at least one new door seal, and there's the defrost clock right there. Click by click. Yeah, I replaced this clock or the thermostat. I forget when. There we go. So it just completely stops. To me, it looks like the pan has been having problems defrosting. I would say a lot of this could be from the extra moisture is going to be uh, from the seal being ripped and then the fact that the drain is probably plugged. So let's let it run for a little bit, see if we can blow it out. Well, it's in defrost. Let's see if we can get this drain line apart and blow it out. That is right here. The drain heater is. I don't know if that's coming through, but they're not. You see the drain heater right there. That feels warm to me, so that's a good thing. It means it's drain heater's working. Now we'll go ahead and we'll blast some air through one, we'll blast some air through the other. You can see got a little bit of cold junk here. Let's go ahead and blow that out. Real quick. Could be having issues with the defrost clock not working too, or we could have a heater now. Getting a little bit of dripping. That's a good sign. So yeah, there we're now in a nice stream. So we know we're draining now. Um, go ahead and hook it back up. That's the way it was originally. I would have been better off. It would have been better off if we brought the drain straight down, but I would have put it in the way, and chances are we got it screwed with and stuff like that. Had to use the pliers there to force it up in there, so the little heater is damming down in there. This should fill up, which it already is. You can see the water right there to the top. Okay, it's draining. That means the defrost heaters are working and the drain's clear. All right, use some diaper cleaner here on this. We've got a pan down here to catch it, non-toxic, so we don't have to worry about it creating any major issues, but that's gonna get that nasty grease off there that they've got floating around here. It just shut off from the defrost. We've got some water here in the sprayer. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this thing. Just right here. We'll get this thing uh, rinsed out here real quick with some hot water. Looks like we got our pretty dog on clean. There's a couple stains in there, but grease never wants to come out. You can see the water coming out is clean. We got the fan blade all cleaned up. All the craps off of it for the most part. A couple little spots here and there. We're gonna try this, see how it goes, and then kind of go from there. Break that up and clean that out. But they, they really need to open it up and drain it out. That's what I'm gonna tell them to do. They just need to 
open it up tonight, leave it open, doors open, and uh, completely clean this out in the morning and put the food back in it. Really, like I said, we're gonna order that gasket. That's gonna wrap that up. We'll come back and we'll double check things when I come back and we'll see if that uh, took care of it. And if it did, great. And if not, we'll investigate further. All right, guys, so we're back at this one with the defrost clock. So what's going on now? No longer is it freezing up. So the defrost clock must have taken care of the line set, but they were complaining that the freezer here was kicking on and off and one of the other employees at one of the other shops over there said they heard it acting funny so i checked the clock or checked the pressure switch it's a little out of whack so i went ahead and adjusted my cut in first around here we usually go for about 22 23 ish went ahead and threw it in defrost pulling 13 amps there with the heater and the compressor both running Contact here's a little bit pitted. I hate to go through and start changing a bunch of stuff. I, I never have liked it when everyone likes to wait until like 16 things are broke because they don't want to pay a trip out. They just pile on the work. So you got to focus on multiple things at one time. And so you got to like balance that with how many things you need to tell them about just because it's like you feel like you're taking them to the cleaners like some of these sales guys do. Right now it's off and right at about uh, three, four pounds. Looks like my time clock here is running just fine on it. So about two pounds, three pounds, 20. I mean, that's definitely lower than it needs to be. It's gonna, you know, never get that low to cut in. Cut in's gonna be somewhere around 25 areas, so you're like 60. We could go up a little higher. I don't know if I'm really too horribly worried about it because I mean it's pumping down pretty easy. That's a lot faster than the other one did. You can just tell the valves are probably taking a dump. Now if you had any residual, any leak by, that would cause it to come back up right away and then trip out. Sorry about that wind noise there. We got the wind sock on there now. So it's holding there. I'm not horribly worried about that. What I'm gonna do now is we're gonna uh, pour some water in the drain line. I had already vacuumed the drain line out to see if we could get any uh, plugs out. Uh, I think what's happening, I didn't notice or didn't pay close enough attention because you, you really gotta decipher what people are trying to tell you. If you don't ask the right questions, you're not, you're gonna assume things and it's not what they're wanting you to, they're not what they're trying to tell you. So you've gotta, you got a question I'm really, really good and ask multiple qualifying questions. That way you're on the right path. And that's my fault for not doing that. So let's go inside and pour some water in that drain. I put the freezer into a defrost. That way it's back on time and that it will help warm up the drain a little bit more because it's not gonna be quite, you know, blowing the cold air on it. Not that it really should make much of a difference. All right, so we got us some really hot water here. Let's go in there and see what we can do with this. The uh, T right here is so they could run the heat tape down through the center. So that heat tape goes this direction and goes that direction. You can see that thing red on the uh, thermal imager just fine. I don't want to pour too much water in there just because I don't want it to overfill. We're gonna go in there like this, we're gonna hook it. Pour it in, that way it doesn't spill over the edge and everything else. Yep, there it is, it's leaking down there. See, just what little water I poured in there, it's already leaking. Probably got a buildup of crap in there. That's what sucks when they do it like this. And they went ahead and screwed that on there, so that's not gonna be very good. So there's a hook. Just kinda see if we can get any leftovers. Okay, I was able to pound that down in it. I uh, did not glue it. I could put a cap over it. Right now, I'm going to see if I can cut that over there. I got a union right there. You can see the drain line looks about half nasty and plugged up. It really probably needs to come down and even, uh, need a new drain line. Um, I put that so the uh, black O-ring will uh, show that direction. That way you'll see if you lose it or not. Okay, I don't know if I'm gonna leave this on there because I'm afraid it may not drain well with it on, but 
right now it's good enough so I can get this thing blown out. Yeah, it's already out of defrost. Okay, we've got that right there. What they do is they run the drain heater down through that the T right there and it goes on out. Well, you've got another T right there. And that very likely could blow stuff all over the place. It's, to me, it's just, just a sh crap design. They should have never ran it that way, in my, my opinion. There wasn't a whole lot of other ways to do it. Normally, we'd just go out the back wall. There really is no other way other than to have came out through here and drained out over there, which would have been probably the smartest thing to do. It just came out, but it would have been a floor drain over there. And there's not, so what do you do? Wow, look at that nasty crap. It did blow some up through here. Luckily it's just on that back wall. Let's go ahead and pour some water in it, see what we got. I suppose what we could do, blast the other direction too, but like I said, I had already had the vacuum cleaner on it first. We're gonna give it the whole, the whole pot. If we don't, then it means it's probably piling into the freezer. All right, we're gonna go ahead and try hitting it from the other direction. We got her loose. Will it happen again? I guarantee it will. Is it working for now? Yeah. We're just gonna flush the living pee out of it. All right, I just poured a bottle or another one of those through there. Let's watch this again. We didn't get nothing inside these boxes. It just mainly splattered on that wall. So it just looks bad back here. I don't wanna leave it like that and have somebody call in on you. Gotta be warm if you wanna melt that stinking stuff off. Got her all cleaned up, threw away the box, put it in that bo uh, bowl there. Everything's cleaned up off the wall and stuff, so it's one of them things, I mean, <sighs> should have probably thrown a rag over top of it, my screw up, but I had to get the stupid thing open. I don't know what else you could have done. That's probably gonna wrap this one up. I'm still waiting for the door seals on the uh, reach-in uh, freezer yet, but short of that, that's about it. So, good to go. If you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, give it a thumb. Till next time, we'll see you on the next one. Later.